will not function in the absence of even the smallest of its components evolved gradually through a series of minute changes. Charles Darwin was aware of this and wrote in his book The Origin of Species. If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. But I can find out no such case. It might have been regarded as normal in Darwin's own time for him to say he can find no such case because in the second half of the 19th century the world of science was at a rather primitive technological level compared to that of today. Under their primitive microscopes life did indeed appear to have only a simple structure. At that time when the cell was described as a simple little lump of carbon Darwin was unaware of the meaning of the words genetics, electron microscope or biochemistry Yet scientific discoveries in the 20th century would lead the idea that life was simple, being consigned to the waste bin of history. In 1931, the German scientist Ernst Ruska invented the electron microscope. It was seen that cells, hitherto considered to be little lumps of carbon, were actually extraordinarily complex life forms, capable of multiplying on their own and producing energy, and with special defensive systems to protect them from enemies. Darwin's unrealistic idea that the first cell came into existence by chance was thus totally invalidated. In 1955, James Watson and Francis Crick revealed, with the discovery of the structure of the DNA, that living things contained very special genetic information encoded in the nuclei of their cells and that this data could not be changed by acquired characteristics. Advances in the field of fossil science also placed the theory of evolution in a worsening quandary with every passing day. There was not a trace of the intermediate forms alleged to link species to one another. According to the theory, it took millions of years for one species to evolve into another. That meant that from the physiological point of view there should be thousands, even millions of intermediate forms between them. The number of fossils belonging to these should be numbered in the trillions and the strata of the earth should be full of such forms. However, despite decades of excavations, not a single intermediate form of all the millions and even billions there should in theory be has ever been encountered. Today, speculation continues with regard to just a few dozen fossils, and all of these have in any case been proven not to be intermediate forms, but rather particular and extinct specimens. Today, even the best-known evolutionist paleontologists honestly admit that they have no longer any hope that intermediate forms will ever be found. One of these, Stephen Jay Gould, says in one of his books, As we survey the history of life, one feature stands out as most puzzling, the lack of clear order and progress through time among marine invertebrate faunas. We can tell tales of improvement for some groups, but in honest moments we must admit that the history of complex life is more a story of multifarious variation about a set of basic designs than a saga of accumulating excellence. The eyes of early trilobites, for example, have never been exceeded for complexity or acuity by later arthropods. Why do we fail to find this expected order? The electron microscope and the discovery of the structure of the DNA, the conclusion reached by modern-day paleontology, these alone were sufficient to tear down the already unsteady foundations of the theory of evolution proposed by Darwin. However, one of the most serious blows to the theory of evolution came only recently from the field of biochemistry. According to Michael Behe, 
a professor of biochemistry at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania, it is impossible for the complex organs in living things to have come about by means of natural selection and mutations, which shows that the cell was created. It's really interesting to notice that the more we know about life and the more we know about biology, the more problems Darwinism has and the more design becomes apparent. For the longest time, I believe that Darwinian evolution explains what we saw in biology. Not because I saw how it could actually explain it, but because I was told that it did explain it. In, in schools, I was taught Darwinian biology. And through college and graduate school, I was in an atmosphere which just assumed that Darwinian evolution explained biology. And again, I didn't have any reason to doubt it. It wasn't until about, you know, 10 years or more ago that I read a book called Evolution, A Theory and Crisis by a, a geneticist by the na name of Michael Denton, an Australian. And he put forward a lot of scientific arguments against Darwinian theory that I had never heard before. And, and the arguments uh, seemed pretty convincing. And at that point, I, I started to get a bit angry because I, I thought I was being led down the primrose path. Here were a number of very good arguments, and I had gone through a, a doctoral program in biochemistry, became a faculty member, and uh, I had never even heard of these things. And so from that point on, I became very interested in, in the question of evolution. And, and uh, since have decided that Darwinian uh, processes are not uh, the whole explanation for life. In his book, Darwin's Black Box, The Biochemical Challenge to Evolution, Behe describes how in Darwin's time, the living cell was a black box whose contents were unknown, and how with the unraveling of the details within the cell, it emerged that it was actually a very complex structure. The powerful evidence in Behe's book was greeted with despair among evolutionist circles, and the work itself was soon being discussed by well-known media organizations. One of the points most concentrated on by Behe is that of irreducible complexity. According to Darwin's assumptions, complex organs in living things, such as the eye, ear, and heart assumed their present forms by means of minute and gradual changes over billions of years. Scientific research reveals, however, that it is impossible for these organs, and in particular for the molecular machinery inside the cell, to have developed in stages. These are very complex structures consisting of a combination of small components. The system will serve no purpose at all if any of those components fails to fulfill its function. With these compound structures, these organs and systems possess a complexity that cannot be reduced to a simpler form. The best known example of irreducible complexity is the whip mechanism found in certain bacteria. The bacterial flagellum, a whip-like extension, has been known for a long time. Observations in the last decade, however, astonished the scientific world when they revealed its detailed structure. That is because the whip was shown to function not with a simple vibratory mechanism, as had been thought earlier, but with a very complex organic motor. Bacteria use the flagellum to move. This whip is the only organ in the world of living things capable of a genuine rotating movement. Thanks to this, the bacterium moves in whichever direction it wishes and can also make sudden stops and maneuvers.